Prior to making anything, I like to do uh, a 3D model first. Um, I've got a Dremel Digilab, uh, which is really nice to use. Um, that was the uh, XL500 rear wheels bearing retainer. Um, I modelled that in 3D first. And this is for the lathe, and it's for a gauge end stop. I'd like a DRO, but this, this this suited my needs perfectly and another useful tool is these comb um, gauges where I can actually push it against it and so you can see the profile there and on this side of where I'm for, for manufacturing the profile on this Crewwork 600 watt 8 by 14 mini lathe. Was it up to the job to make a part for an XL500 1979 real wheel bearing retainer? Well, to cut a long story short, yes. This is 65mm across, 26mm hole, 40mm internal bore and an M50 by 1.5 thread. Came from originally a stock bar of 75mm which I then turned down to the appropriate diameters and bored out this hole. Uh, I think the largest drill I've got was about 20mm so I had to bore that out and the 40mm I had to bore out as well. Did it do the job? Yes. What's it for? Anybody who's renovating an XL500 or 250S um, will know if you need to change the real world bearing you've got to get this off and you need a special tool for it or a hammer and chisel which I opted for which wasn't the best option so I've bought the proper tool now but in doing so I ended up shattering it and breaking it and tried to buy another one and they're obsolete um, so I've made this part and it fits this perfectly. Um, the original part looks something like that now. Um, this is there because it sort of broke when I was doing it. So the lathe. I could, I, I could have uh, probably got somebody to uh, make one for me but I thought I'd have a go myself. I had the lathe so I thought I'd give it a go. Okay the lathe as it comes. Can you use it out of the box? No, um, it lacks a chuck for drilling holes. The tool supplied, I would say, they're okay. They're brazed, I think carboid bits. Um, they're not brilliant. They need dressing before you can use them. Didn't like them at all. So I opted to buy, as an upgrade, um, some carbide insert type tips, these are 10mm shank and they fit into the standard tool post no problem whatsoever. The next upgrade that I did was I put myself a stop uh, with a gauge to act as a DRO effectively so when I was winding in on the threads or the turning um, as I got close to where I needed to be um, I could slow down and just hand feed um, or manually when I'm threading just manually turn the chuck by hand no problem whatsoever the whole thing is it's it's okay it's not brilliant but uh, the, the tool post um, a lot of people change out to a quick change it probably does need that it does actually have an angled rotation on it but to get to it you've got to wind this all the way back and there's two nuts there that you've got to loosen it's not ideal it means you've got to wind it back in because there's too, there's too much play in that afterwards so I don't like that idea the biggest problem I had was when I was trying to surface uh, generally I don't know why but every time I did it that would always end up there I'd be winding this in and at some point I inevitably knock that so I ended up basically holding this wheel and winding with the other hand it's not ideal this needs a lock and the next upgrade I'm going to do 
he's put a travel lock on it. Um, doesn't come as standard, but he definitely needs one. Especially if you're parting off or anything, the last thing you want to do is to knock that across while you're doing anything. So that will be an upgrade. Um, but really, other than that, it does the job quite well. Um, threading, no problem at all. Just turn him on. Um, spins quite nice. I mean, this material is the material I made the 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 uh, this wheel space and bearing retainer from. It's a little bit long, but I was going to make two. Um, I'll probably get around to making another spare and watch if they're on eBay or whatever, but because they're obsolete parts now. It's not ideal the length of it, but unfortunately the parting off tools I've got when this is wound back just won't fit in. So the only way to cut it back is to be the hacksaw and I ain't gonna do that. Holds it nice, so no problem. Small cuts. Do everything slowly, no problem whatsoever. Threading, no problem at all. At the rear here. Uh take this off, you supplied a complete set of gears. And there's a pl uh, an indicator on the side which tells you which gears to pl place on for what pitch thread you want. Did that. 10 minute job really uh, and then simply to thread um, you just engage the travel lock um, wind it in by hand if you want um, or very slowly on the on the feed so you can bring that in and out um, wind it in and then put it into the reverse direction and grind it back out. And as long as you don't adjust the touch or adjust the lock um, or take it off the, the pitch and the, the, the way it threads from will stay constant. Did that no problem whatsoever. There are other upgrades where people put uh, a cheap vernier, um, they glue it onto here with a 3D printed part. Um, I have actually bought vernier to do the job which at some point I'll probably mount on there uh, it the drilling wasn't that critical for me so it's not a major issue at the moment would I say it was up to the job yes I mean it was a big part to start 65 mil across I um, mean so from the the, the outer diameter of the original material 75 mil did it do the job okay yes it took quite a bit of time but slow and steady and it got there so I'd say yes, generally a good investment. Um, it'll come in quite useful. I mean the, the XL500 here. Uh, so it's a bit in the dark, but it's all in pieces at the moment. Um, just not doing a nut and bolt restoration. Keeping the original patina, just changing all the, the uh, bearings, chain, anything wearable basically. And that'll be... Um, Well, I hope this helps. Help, helps if you're uh, interested in using one of these mini lathes. This is the uh, MX 8x14 uh, from Amazon. Uh, cost about 460 UK pounds, and I think it's well worth the money because it's a good construct uh, for uh, quite a few modifications and upgrades that you can do. Um, but 90% of it's there. The little things need addressing, like. These, this needs changing out. They tend to start unscrewing as you're threading in and out. So with the, the this this one and this thing keeps vibrating loose every time I, uh, it, it, you know, you get a bit of chatter or whatever. So those are some upgrades I'm going to do. But as I say, I've got a 3D printer, and I'll just print parts or manufacture parts that I need. But the main one will be to put a lock on this, a travel lock on this, so I can lock it. It really, I think that is a safety issue really that does need addressing and should have been on this from standard really. But I hope this helps. Um, it's no way uh, a demonstration of manufacturing the parts or anything, that's up to you. Um, it took me quite a few hours to do that so it's not something I wanted to show on video but it, the machine is capable of doing it and it does it okay. 